Hello everyone, this is Allison, and this is a little review of codes. I know this has been causing a lot of anxiety. I've been seeing in the discussions um, and even a few private messages that um, y'all are feeling a little uneasy about these combination codes. So I am concerned that maybe you all have the wrong idea about them and um, I haven't clarified enough. So that is what I'm going to do. And if you have mastered combination codes, no concerns, you can skip this, no problem. So what are combination codes? Combination codes, um, they help with simplifying the sequencing of codes. What is sequencing? Sequencing is exactly that other issue that we have trouble with, right? Figuring out what is the first listed diagnosis. What should be next, right? So we all have trouble with that. Um, combination codes help because you just have the one code instead of you know three or four to describe um, a, a diagnosis or a situation that's going on with a patient. Um, of course, you would still have procedure codes and things like that, even if you have a combination code or they could have multiple diagnoses and just two of them are a combination code. But regardless, it helps simplify things for you. So that's why they are actually really great. They make life so much easier. <laughs> and especially when you're taking that national exam, you get a big long list of um, conditions and then you go and look it up and it's just one code. That's like the biggest sigh of relief, right? Um, and you might be saying no, cause I don't want to feel that anxiety when I see that big long list of symptoms or I'd rather know, hey, there's six different diagnoses. I should ju need just six different codes. Um, but I promise you, the more you do it, especially when you are actually coders, you are going to love combination codes. Um, so what do combination codes do? They describe two related diagnoses. So there might be two different conditions, neuropathy and diabetes. You could have these both separately, but they are very often together. Um, and so they are coded in one code. Um, and they do have separate codes, but they would also have one code. Um, so they might have a diagnosis and its manifestation or its symptom. Um, last week we talked about uh, severe sepsis with septic shock. So that would have been a combination code. That was um, the manifestation of the severe sepsis was that septic shock. Um, and so there's one code that de it describes that situation rather than having to get one code for severe sepsis and another for septic shock. Um, and then it could also be a diagnosis in its associated condition. So some another condition that comes up because of um, that condition or they're just very, very closely linked. Um, so there can be combination codes for those as well. The most often time you'll see them, and this is, might explain why I keep using the diabetes example is because there's tons of combination codes in diabetes. And um, in fact, almost all of them, if not all of them are combination codes. So that's where a lot of examples come from. They also have them with pressure ulcers. And I'll show you one of those because I think we do talk about the guidelines for ulcers this week. If not this week, then we'll probably do it next week. Um, and with pressure ulcers, it'll allow you to code um, the location and the stage of the ulcer. And so that's really convenient. So instead of having to have ulcer um, you know, on the back, and it's stage three, you can have one code that describes all of that. Um, also coronary artery disease has a lot of combination codes just because there's a lot of co-occurring conditions there. Um, and then poisonings, um, any, anything to do with like a toxic substance is gonna have um, combination codes as well. But you'll see them throughout, but those are just the most common ones. So why should you use a combination code? Besides it being simpler, like I said, isn't it great to be able to look up one code instead of two or three or four or more? Um, a combination code will most accurately describe the condition or the circumstances. So it clearly links these two conditions together. It clearly links this um, primary disease with its manifestation. Uh, so there's no gray area. Um, when you're submitting that to the insurance company and they might 
you know, kick it back and say, oh, these two things weren't related and this is going to get reimbursed at this rate and that will be get reimbursed at that rate. No, there's no gray area. Um, we know these two conditions are related and this one is caused by that one. Um, so that's why it's great. Also, um, the reason why you want to use a combination code, because if you don't, then if you say, um, hey, there's a combination or there's a single code for each of these things, I'm just going to go ahead and list three different codes instead of a combination code. That's called unbundling. And um, that's one of the things we talked about in the first unit, first module. And that can, it can be lower reimbursement. Um, it can look like you are trying to get more money than you ought to be getting if you do it repeatedly, but um, mainly it's just going to get those claims kicked back to you because there is a combination code available, you should use it. So that's why um, we need to learn about them and get comfortable finding them. So how do I know I'll need a combination code? And this is where I think most people are getting tripped up um, because I just see a lot of comments that's, that seem to say things like, how do I, you know, I can't recognize that there's supposed to be a combination code there. Um, so I wanna clarify that unless you already are familiar with the code or those groups of codes, you will not know from the note or the description that you need a combination code. Um, especially if it's a true physician's note, you're not gonna know, hey, there's a combination code for these two things and it's telling me in the note. Um, but even on, national exam or the quizzes here, you're not gonna know just from reading it, hey, this is definitely a combination code. Um, so you're gonna have to go and do some investigation to find out, is there a combination code that works here? Um, the things that will tip you off that are gonna let you know, hey, there might be a combination code that works here is if you, th if you see things like um, disease X with disease Y or due to disease Y or associated with, or um, this condition in disease X um, or caused by, things like that in the note are going to kind of tip you off that, hey, these two are definitely related. They're not just two separate diseases that this patient has. Um, they are, there's some kind of relationship there. And so there might be a combination code that I can look up. And then you're going to have to go and identify it and see, hey, is there actually a combination code? And there might not be. And in that case, you're going to need two codes um, or more, depending on the situation. Um, so the key here is going to know is going to be identifying your main term. Um, so if you know that main term, you know that primary word you're going to be looking up. You can find it in the alpha index. And then under that, in the subterms, you can see, is there something that says with second diagnosis or with the second um, condition that I'm looking for? Uh, and then you can also still, even if that's not the case, um, there's a more, just a general code it sends you to, um, you can still go and check in the tabular because we always go alpha first, then tabular, and look at the includes notes and see if, hey, does this include um, the condition that's being described? Because sometimes that will happen. You will see, um, I'm trying, um, a lot of times with like skin conditions, you will see uh, them describe some of the symptoms, like there's some edema or swelling um, or minor irritation or something like that. And when you go and actually look at the code, it'll have an includes notes or underneath um, the code, it'll say with edema or includes with edema or something like that. And so um, it's really important just to make sure you're reading through everything. But the main point here is that you are not, there's no like magic um, clue that you are missing if you don't know from looking at a question, if it's a combination code. Uh, you have to do the investigation yourself. So that I think is what people are maybe hyper-focusing on and you feel like you're failing because you didn't know that uh, retinopathy and diabetes was gonna be a combination code. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't know that. You've gotta go look it up. So um, don't beat yourself up about that. So we're gonna look up just a few of them just to kind of give you a feel for it. And I know you've probably 
done all of these or very similar ones, but this will just get us comfortable with it. If you want to pause it and go look it up, um, and then we can check them together. But otherwise, let's get started on it. So hyperglycemia associated with type 2 diabetes. So the key term there is going to be associated with. Um, and so we know that this condition, hyperglycemia, is um, happening in conjunction with the type 2 diabetes. And the type 2 diabetes is going to be the main condition that's causing that hyperglycemia. Um, so we will want to look up diabetes with hyperglycemia. Um, and it'll be type 2 diabetes, of course. So, and this is going to be kind of tricky. So if you haven't done it yet, um, make sure you're careful about the beginning of this word. Hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia are actually opposite things, but they are spelled so similarly, it can be very difficult. Um, you know, it's real easy to, to pick the wrong one. In fact, when I was making this slide, I almost did the wrong one. Um, so that's something you will want to look out for. So if you want to go check that out, uh, the next one is going to be a pressure ulcer of the right hip stage one. Now this one is great because um, maybe it doesn't say with or associated with, but we know stage one has to be the kind of pressure ulcer, right? We also know that it's an, so our main term is going to be ulcer because what type of ulcer is it? It's a pressure ulcer. We also have the location in here, right hip. So we have a lot of information to go on. Um, so we're going to look up ulcer pressure of right hip and see if it lists the stage. And then um, we'll go find a combination code for that. And then ulcerative colitis with obstruction. This is another real classic one. It says with, that's going to be your hint that, hey, there might be a, um, a combination code here. If there is not, what you should do, and if you don't know anything about ulcerative colitis or obstruction, what that might mean, you need to go learn a little bit about ulcerative colitis and find out what kind of disease is this? What part of the body does this affect? What does obstruction mean? Um, so if you know about ulcerative colitis, you know it's an intestinal condition. And um, if you know much about it, you know that there's often a intestinal obstructions that come along with it. So if you know that already, then you're already ahead of the game. But if you don't know it, now's the time for you to go look things up, find out what do I know about ulcerative colitis? What does obstruction with ulcerative colitis mean? Okay. So that is kind of our work as coders. Of course, if you are in a testing scenario, you can't go look things up. You're not going to have your um, dictionary with you, but um, still that with word is going to say, hey, maybe I should see if there is a, um, a combination code that'll work here. Okay, so let's go check it out and see what we can find. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't have the camera plugged in all the way, so it wasn't coming up for me. Okay, um, so here's our manual, right? 2021, that's the one we want. I'll be checking every single time now. Make sure I'm using the bucks. Make sure it's a 2021. Um, all right, so the first one is that diabetes type two with hyperglycemia. So we are going to look up diabetes type two. Let's see if we can find. Okay, here's diabetes. Here's type one, we're looking for type two. Luckily I've already marked it here. So we're gonna look at diabetes type two, be a good place to start. And then anything that has that with underneath, all of these are combination codes. So we are looking for hyperglycemia. So down here is hypoglycemia. 
that's the wrong one. Hyperglycemia is up here. E11.65. So we're going to go look that up. And see if there are any other notes, anything else that we need to know before we use that code. Okay, so here on page 747, we have um, type 2 diabetes with other specified complications. That's the main category up here. And we are going to go all the way down to E11.65. Type 2 diabetes mellitus with hyperglycemia. So as always, I'm going to highlight it. Remember, not hypoglycemia, not this one. <laughs> you want this one right here. So E11.65, it doesn't look like there are any other conditions, no red stop signs, no includes notes, nothing like that. Um, so we are good to go. We're gonna use E11.65, okay? Next one we're going to look at is pressure ulcer of right hip stage one. So the only word here that is an actual um, condition is ulcer. So that's the word we're going to start with. We're going to do ulcer comma pressure and see if we can find that. Okay. Go to your alpha, go to the U section. Okay, so I'm in ulcer, and it would be really tempting to just go ulcer and then go to the location because um, it looks like it's listed by foot, lower limb, um, so that would be really tempting, but we want to make sure we have the right thing, the right kind of ulcer, so double check uh, and see if there is pressure ulcer. And here on page 464, the middle column, there's pressure ulcer, kind of towards the bottom. And then we are looking for hip. L89.2, and there's a stop sign. And then it doesn't uh, specify further here but we will go ahead and uh, look down here. And actually, if you looked right here, just, just as I'm glancing, there is stage two. So you could go um, pressure ulcer stage one, I'm sorry, stage one is what we're looking for. And then it has it listed by, um, by site. So it's even more specific. So you could either come to pressure ulcer of the hip L89.2 and go look that up. We can go to um, pressure ulcer stage one and then come to hip up here. And it also says L89.2. So it is cross-referenced. Um, so that gets you there either way. So both of those places. But either way, we're gonna have to go look that up because they both have that red stop sign. So let's look up L89.2. Okay, so on page 983, we have L89.2, pressure ulcer of right hip, and we are looking for stage one, pressure ulcer, ulcer of right hip, stage one, L89.211. So that is what we're looking for. And then this is kind of what I was talking about down here. Um, you might see in the documentation, it might say something like um, persistent focal edema is an, is an associated part. So maybe they're describing, hey, there's a pressure ulcer of the right hips. It's stage one, and there is 
persistent focal edema. So then you might think just from reading that, hey, I'm going to need pressure ulcer stage one and also persistent focal edema, but it's actually described here. So you won't need to code that additionally. So that's why it's always good to read this um, because then you might end up, if not, you might end up checking a bunch of other places and trying to add other codes when really just this one was, was perfectly fine. So L89.211 thought is going to be the code that we use. Okay, so next we're going to look up ulcerative colitis with obstruction. And I think I have coded ulcerative colitis with you guys before. I'm not 100% sure. But um, the main term is going to be the colitis. Again, this is the only real diagnosis in this phrase, right? Ulcerative defines the colitis. So that's the kind of colitis it is. And then it has an obstruction. Um, now, if it was just bowel obstruction, yes, that could be a diagnosis, but this is clearly um, a manifestation of the colitis, right? It's clearly something that's happening because of the colitis. Um, so we are gonna go look up colitis and then do comma ulcerative and see if it specifies even further in the alpha or if we need to go um, look at the code itself to see what to do. So let's look up colitis. Okay, so it's on page 152. Colitis starts right here in the middle column, coming up here to the top, and we're looking for ulcerative. Here's ulcerative, which is also chronic colitis. And then underneath that, it has the width. So these are all gonna be additional combination codes, right? So we are looking for obstruction so with obstruction is right here, K51.912. So let's go look that up. I'm gonna have to write it down because that's a long one, right? K51.912. So let's go look that up and see if there's anything else we need to know. Okay, so here we have K51.9, um, ulcerative colitis unspecified. Apparently there are specified ulcerative colitis diagnoses, um, but we don't have that. We just have ulcerative colitis with obstruction. Um, so we are going to look down here. It says with complications, nine, we are looking for K51.912, okay. Ulcerative colitis unspecified with intestinal obstruction. So that is going to be our code. There are no red stop signs. There are no includes notes, excludes notes, um, additional characters required. None of that is in here. So you're good to go and we're going to use K51.912, okay? So let's go back and see if we got it right. Okay, so we had E11.65, L89.211, K51.912. We got them all right. So those are all examples of combination codes of what they're gonna look like. Um, but the main takeaway from here that I hope you all get is that if you don't know right away that you need a combination code, when you look at um, a diagnosis with a manifestation or two diagnoses, that's okay. You have to go and do an investigation. Everybody has to do that. Every coder has to do that. It's not just, we automatically know things. There's no secret trick 
to this, okay? But I promise you, the more you do it, the more familiar you get, the better you'll get at it, the easier it will become. I know I say that in every single video, but I promise it's true. So um, if you do have any other questions about this, feel free to post them in the discussion board and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks.